Senator Lindsey Graham will soon announce whether or not he will run for president on June 1st, according to uh, Reuters. Now, uh, this article uh, in Reuters basically points out how he was talking to CBS this morning uh, on Monday. And basically, he told them, uh, well, he had a chance to tell them on the air, on CBS. The reporter was kind of asking him, hey, do you have anything you want to declare? And he's like, nope, it's a beautiful platform, uh, but not as nice as Central South Carolina. So he's like, I, I want to, you know, if I'm going to announce, I'm going to announce in my home state of South Carolina. Fun times, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I appreciate his uh, hometown pride, but but I, I think his uh, I think his PR people might be uh, might be slamming their heads against the wall right about now. Like, like, hey, you know where the movers and shakers are? South Carolina, not major network television. Right, South Carolina. This is where I'm going to do it. By the way, I think we should point out just so we have uh, transitions for the sake of transitions. Lindsey Graham, not bald, not bald, but I don't agree with him on very much. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, I. <laughs> I'm He's got hair. I'm in agreement with your non-agreement. <laughs> there we go. Dude's uh, got hair. Well, one thing he uh, also surprised us on recently, actually, was uh, his stance on immigration, which is undoubtedly going to hurt him if he decides to run. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, what, I mean, what, what, what has he said recently about immigration? Fill me in. Um, basically, he, he's in favor of a pathway to citizenship, mm -hmm. something that's uh, sensical. That he says, look, we we need to um, we need to develop a pathway to citizenship. We need to stop being crazy when it comes to, you know, uh, the the whole idea of putting up giant border fences. He's like, our rhetoric right now is just not in the land of of, of sanity at this mm -hmm. point, and we need to have a serious discussion on immigration reform, which I think is great. Yeah, I mean, I'm not familiar with those exact statements, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that's great that he that he's he's taken that route, and and I think there are some members of the GOP that that do have that approach to it, and and usually it, it's people that that live in the states. I mean, even even Bush back in the day right. uh, showed a little bit of something resembling compassion when it came to immigration, because he's like, you know, I, I live in Texas, whatever, and and so. But uh, but yeah, I, I think that in 2016, I, I think you're right, that could hurt him. Because I, I think the fear-mongering is going to be turned up to 11 on the right. And if you're not playing that game, yeah, I mean, anything right. you got, whether it's immigration uh, or gay rights, whatever it may be, uh, anything you got that, that's resembling a, a sane approach will hurt you. Well, this just goes to my you know theory that conservative voters are nothing but afraid mm -hmm. and and that that fear is of course propped up by politicians that take advantage of that fear and a media apparatus that also takes advantage for the uh, of the fear because fear stories stories that make you scared oh they're coming for your jobs those illegals from mexico they're going to go to vote for democrats um and you know they're going to steal your jobs they're going to bring down the economy by taking all the entitlements and everything like that that fear-based messaging, that's what the GOP really uh, capitalizes on. And so when you start talking about how we need a, a pathway to citizenship and other things that aren't, you know, that counter that narrative of let's have a real conversation on this real important issue, he's going to get slaughtered on the mm -hmm. right-wing talk shows and cable news outlets on just on that stance because it counters that narrative of we must be afraid yeah and i think it though although general public opinion it seems is more in alignment with what he's saying mm -hmm. so i i mean i think that i guess the other way to look at it you know and we're looking at it strictly from like what the gop wants to do in their camp and their agenda uh the bigger picture though if you want to win a, a general election you have to have some type of uh I guess bipartisan, for lack of a, a better way to put it, even though that it's a little deeper than that. But you have to have some uh, some ability to kind of reach across those aisles, and and I think the past two elections have proven that because you know the whole just complete fear mongering platform it didn't work for McCain and it didn't work for Romney, 
and whoever's coming up in 2016, if that's all they got, it's not going to work for them. So, I mean, in a way, he could kind of use that to his advantage, to, depending on depending on how the, the election unfolds, depending on how the political communication is unfolded. Um, you know, I mean, it all comes down to kind of what PR team you got behind you. And if he is electing to give his big statements in the middle of South Carolina versus a major TV news network, uh, I'm led to believe that he might need a little bit of help in that department. But... But I guess we'll see. It's still early. Yeah, that's a pretty fair assessment. But um, before you think Lindsey Graham is going to be too reasonable for the GOP <laughs> primary. I didn't say that. Well, I'm just saying for anybody at home who thinks he might be a little too reasonable, um, let's take a look at how he views uh, the topic of national security, especially when it comes to the Middle East. Now, he's, of course, famous for buddy-buddying with uh, John McCain, <laughs> one of the biggest hawks. Uh, Warhawks in the Senate. Great and, guy to align yourself with if you're thinking about running for president. That guy really tore it up when he was <laughs> when abs- he was <laughs> absolutely boy. He he just did a great job, didn't he? It was just uh, an excellent job picking his VP candidate. I mean, he he did everything right. Marvelous. It was just it, it was just bad timing. That was all it was, Jeff. No, no, Nothing no, no, else. No, no. It was it was the <laughs> black guy that that made everybody vote for him because he's black, like the black community just voted for him for him black and if you're white wait well, you voted for obama because you had white guilt that must have been it yes yes because he was brilliant brilliant job by john mccain absolutely <laughs> absolutely very in touch with with the general populace he was just yeah and, i i mean <laughs> i like how towards the end he just straight up gave up he's like all right you guys you guys want your president that knows how to use a computer i get it no <laughs> But anyway, that's good that these are the type of friends that Scram's keeping. But between that and him giving all of his important messages in the middle of South Carolina, he's off to a great start. Mm-hmm. Now, it gets better. His policy prescription, if he's president, to deal with uh, ISIL or the Daesh or ISIS or the Islamic State, whatever you want to call them at this point, scary terrorist guys, that works too. Well, his policy prescription for dealing with those people is that you would is that he would send 10,000 troops that are needed to reclaim parts of Iraq. He would send troops, ground troops. Well, even just his exploratory committee, I mean I mean, I mean we can just stop there. Security through strength. Mhm. I mean, I mean that kind of has this kind of like totalitarian like Orwellian, nationalistic yeah. Orwellian like vibe through yeah. it, like security through, through strength. We're going to go over there and bah, and yeah, I mean I'd like to think we moved further from that and, and that like that formula is not working anymore. That formula worked once, uh, you know, after post 9-11 and then people saw, you know, the corruption and the lies that the Bush administration propagated and, and we learned a little bit from it and it has not worked since. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know how far he's going to get with that. I mean, even, you know, in regards to ISIS and stuff like that, I, I mean, yeah, it's a thing, it's real, but as far as like the true paranoid propaganda that, you know, different fringe sects of the rights have tried to push forward, uh, it, it hasn't worked. It's been pretty ineffective. Uh, the only person I know that it's worked on was Scott Stapp, who swore that ISIS was coming to his kid's school. Outside of that, <laughs> I don't know anyone it's worked on, and Creed hasn't been relevant for years and years, so I, I think we're okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I second that. I think we're going to be okay. As far as Lindsey Graham, I don't know, man. <laughs> He's reasonable on one thing and, and one thing only. But everything else, who knows? He might slide into the primaries. And, and look, we already have a giant clown car, so it'll be quite interesting to see what he brings to uh, the, the now clown limousine. Yeah, oh, big time. I mean, that, that's what I was just, I mean, everybody's jumping into this thing. And the, and the reason is, you know, the front runner is, is, is good old Jeb. And people are wondering if, if you know, Jeb's family name's going to bury him right away. Let, 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 me, people, let me disagree with that whole Jeb is the front one runner idea. Who crowned him already? All right. Uh, he's down on all the polls. The, the Republican base hates him. So who, who's deemed him the, the front runner? It has to be corporate media. You're right. You're right. Um, yeah, I, I can't disagree with that. 
I'm just saying, like, in regards strictly from the election standpoint, he's kind of like the guy that sticks out the most right now. Now, it's still early. Um, and, yeah, a lot of that may just have to do with media because he's a sure thing when you want to get ratings because he has that Bush name. Right. That's so, yeah, good. I mean, I, I don't disagree with you on that. I mean, I, I never said, like, he should be the front runner. Or it's great oh, that oh, yeah, yeah. he's just the guy that's front and center right now. And people are wondering, you know, like you said, a lot of the Republican base doesn't like him. Uh, people are wondering if that Bush name is going to just bury him straight out. Mm -hmm. And so the GOP as a whole are wondering, you know, who could we have? Because, I mean, you know, and we've talked about this and gone back and forth uh, about this as well in regards to what's going on over on the Democrat side. But the GOP's main thought process right now is who would be able to beat Clinton, whether or not she gets it. But right. that's the main thing on, on their play because they're concerned with winning. Of course. Well, you know, I mean, you'd have to be a fool to not want to actually win an election. <laughs> well, right. Uh, but it's know. like that's, I mean, that's like their front and foremost strategy. Right. And they're just trying to find the person that would. Because I think they have a really difficult process not to get too off topic. But first you have to get through a Republican primary and with so many people in that primary process, but you have to stand out, as you said. You've got mm -hmm. to stick out somehow. How do you stick out in a primary? You start saying crazy crap. <laughs> right. Well, and especially, I mean, you know, let's be real here. In, in a GOP primary, a lot of the ideas circulating through that party right now are recycled ideas, yeah. uh, ideas that have uh, become not as valid, if they ever were valid in the first place, in the general populace, that most of the American people are tired and cynical towards, and reasonably so. Mm -hmm. Yet you have these special interest groups keep that that's giving CPR to these tired, homophobic, xenophobic ideas, and that's what the right's working with. And, and you know, like you have some other more libertarian type guys that are you know kind of peeking their head in here and there, but they're not right. getting very far for whatever reason. Right. That's a good point. And the other part that's very difficult for somebody in the GOP primaries too is after you go so far right in order to try to stick out to the base, now you're going to have to moderate your approach to not turn off those, uh, those, those regular voters. There, there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a word that I can't think of to call them, but you know, the general election voters, you got to avoid turning those people off and, just as you had pointed out, a lot of people in the general are are not interested in, in a lot of these old uh, recycled ideas. I mean, if you even look at a lot of the polling and a lot of the support in conservative states for things like raising the minimum wage, their old idea that they're going through the primary is get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Well, most Americans back a minimum wage. Most Americans back Social Security and Medicare and even keeping so a lot large portions of the health care law. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of Americans favor straight up universal health care. Um, you know, they may have different ideas on how to get there, but but a lot of Americans just generally favor that idea. Yeah, absolutely. And the GOP does not at all uh, reflect that in their policy prescriptions. I mean, Jeb Bush with his Apple Watch. And that's ridiculous. 